Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to have a discussion about amphibians. Let's move to question number one. Question number one, it explains how many lineages are there in ancient amphibians? As far as ancient group of amphibians is concerned, there are two main lineages. One of the lineage of amphibians it is To the uh, related to the gymnophonia or Sicilians, and the other lineage from which salamander and frogs they are from. So, right option is alpha. Question number two salamanders and newts they belong to their order is Chordata as are tailed amphibians. The other two orders uh, in class amphibia include gymnophonia and anura. Gymnophania they include Sicilians and in Europe it includes frogs and toads. So order Chordata, that salamander and newts they are from Chordata. So question number three, well-developed larynx is observed in which order? Well-developed larynx for the production of sound in communication processes is observed in case of frogs and toads as they're having well-developed vocal cords as well and epiglottis, glottis, as well as other structures which are involved in the production of sound. So right option over here will be alpha, that any neurons they are having larynx or voice producing apparatus. Members of the family Salamandridae are commonly called newts. They are commonly observed as uh, newts and salamanders salamandry fam uh, family ichthyostega is an early amphibian one of the following characters not related to it ichthyostega they are observed as earliest amphibians and they are having heavy pectoral girdle heavy pelvic girdle and their skull as you can see over here is fish like but their jaws, they are much stronger. They are not weak jaws. So, Charlie is the right option for Ichthyostega. Number six, which of the following period is considered as the origin of earliest amphibians? Earliest amphibians they evolved during Devonian period. And Devonian period may lead to the development of fishes, uh, development of amphibians from the fishes. So, right option is alpha. Which of the following is the function of retractile tentacle in Sicilians? These tentacles, which are retractile, they are basically concerned with olfaction in case of amphibians or Sicilians. Number eight, larval forms in many Sicilians, they get food from the dash by using their fetal teeth. Larval forms, they are developing in the oviduct and they get their food from uh, there from, uh, by using their fetal teeth. So right option will be delta. Which of the following order in amphibian is having largest number of species? As you can see in the picture as well, uh, that there are different species of frogs shown here and frogs, they belong to a neurons. <coughs> Salamander, newts or Sicilians, they are lesser in number as far as species uh, types or diversity is concerned. So we'll prefer the right option alpha over here that in neurons, frog and toad, they are having more species rather than Chordata or Gymnophionia members. Which of the following order has some representatives even in the dry deserts? Amphibians uh, which usually live near the <coughs> moist places, near the water, but some of the members of a neurons such as uh, certain frogs they are also found in dry deserts and they have certain modifications according to the deserts. So right option is alpha over here. Relatively dry and warty skin is found in toads as compared to frog. While the frogs, they are having smoother skin, jump more, live near the water. And toads, they are having rough skin, warts and they are terrestrial. And having glands in their skin as well. <clears throat> Which of the following function can be attributed to the glands of skin in amphibians? 
Different glands which are found in the skin of amphibians, they help in prevention of drying. They also help them to protect from the predator and they help them in locating mates as well. So right option is delta over here. It's a cross section from the amphibian skin showing different glands and different <clears throat> pigments in the skin. Which of the following strategy is a warning signal for the predator? It is a, a posmotic coloration, obviously, but uh, we know cryptic coloration is a type of coloration in which an, an animal gets the shape of its environment to hide itself. While in case of a posmotic uh, coloration, an animal it adapts to the warning colors, warning color patterns, as you can see here in the frog, it is a posmotic coloration, which is showing as a warning signal to the predator. Mimicry is a strategy in which one species mimics the other in order to survive or uh, having more chances of survival to avoid predators. And counter shading is a strategy in aquatic environment mostly, in which lower side of the body is lightly colored and upper side of the body is darkly colored so that it cannot be observed easily from the lower or upper side as in case of penguins or other aquatic organism aquatic animals so right option over here will be beta a cosmetic coloration the amphibian skull is flattened and has dash bony elements than the skull of fishes as far as skull of amphibians is concerned it is having pure bony elements when we compare it to the skull of fishes. So right option over here will be delta. Which of the following bony processes prevent twisting? Invertebrae of amphibians. Such process, uh, pro processes they are known as zygapophysis and they prevent twisting and help in the proper movement of vertebral column. In which of the following group of vertebrates, neck is missing? Neck is not observed in case of fishes, but certain amphibians, they also have neck vertebrae or neck reptiles they have developed as well as twisting ability of the neck and birds and mammals, they are having well-developed neck vertebrae. So right option uh, over here will be fish alpha. The long hind limbs and pelvic girdle in A neurons, they're specialized for jumping actually in frogs. They use their hind limbs for jumping process. And female larvae, which are tadpoles, they are mostly herbivores, that is, they are getting their nutrients <coughs> from the plant material or algae. The true tongue was first time observed in amphibians, and it is actively used for the predation. Uh, as you can see, a frog is flipping out his tongue to capture an insect. Tongue of the frog and toad is attached at the base of uh, oral cavity on the anterior end. So right option over here will be beta. The tongue is free over here while attached on the anterior side. It's attached from uh, where I'm going to cut it darkly. But the other part, other uh, portion is free. Number 21, which of the following is having better separation of systemic and pulmonary circulation than amphibians? Lung fishes, they are actually having better circulation plan as, as far as amphibians are concerned. But mammalian and reptilian circulation plan, they are also evolved, form, evolved forms of the amphibians' lungs. So that's why we are preferring lung fishes. Other fishes are having poor circulatory plan as they are having single circuit circulation. Which of the following is not found in the lymphatic system of amphibians? Lymphatic system of amphibians, it does not include adenoids, but lymph blind ending lymph vessels or lymphatic heart as the structural features of lymphatic system in amphibians. Percentage of cutaneous respiration in salamander is almost 30 to 90%. That is most of the gases exchange generally takes place along their skin. What is the mode of respiration in amphibian larvae? Amphibian larvae obviously they are having external gills. 
and these external gills they modify into the lungs as they metamorphose into an adult. Temperature regulation in amphibian is mainly a behavioral adaptation whenever it is needed or it is performed. Otherwise, we know that amphibians they are cold-blooded animals and usually they do not regulate their body temperature. But on the terrestrial conditions, they have to regulate it. And they regulate it by changing their behavior. Temperature of amphibian is dashed to the environment in water while dashed when they are on land, as I discussed in the previous question, that their temperature is similar to the environment when they are in aquatic conditions. While it varies when they are on land, so right option will be beta over here. Here are some different stages and we can say that initial stages they pass most of the time in the water while adult stages they may uh, live some time on the land as well. And there are certain species as well. Optic tectum in the midbrain of amphibian is the main structure for the interpretation of visual input. That is it is concerned with vision process. Number 28, one of the following is not performed by sense of olfaction or smell in amphibians. They carry out mate location, food location, or detection of noxious chemicals by using smell. But frequency detection is a function of ears, so it is not related to olfaction sense. Charlie is the right option. Vision in amphibian is binocular. That is they make use of both eyes for observing a specific object and for most of the time. The ear of a neurons, they lack outer portion, outer ear, but it has impanic membrane, middle ear or inner ear. As you can see, it's the structure of middle ear and inner ear in an amphibian. High frequency waves are passed to the inner ear through dash and low frequency wave through dash. As you can see in the structure, that high frequency waves, they're passed to the tympanum. Here uh, are two types of arrows shown, a purple color arrow and blue color arrow. Dark blue color arrows, they show the pathway for high frequency sounds, violet stapes or columella. They're moving to the inner ear via stapes or columella. While low frequency sounds, they are moving via upper column to the inner parts of the ear for further processing. So in this case, right option will be delta, that high frequency waves are passed to the inner ear through tympanic membrane and low frequency waves through upper column. Nitrogenous waste produced by the amphibians, it may be ammonia or urea, depending upon the availability of water. But if you don't have the uh, option of both, you will prefer urea. That most of the amphibians, they release urea as major nitrogenous waste product. In this case, you will prefer ammonia or urea. As some of the amphibians, they also produce ammonia as a waste product. Salamander, they usually lack outer ear, tympanum, as well as middle ear. And there are very few structures of the inner ear which are uh, involved in the salamanders. Cocoons are made of, uh, from outer layers of the skin in amphibians and it's the structure strategy for thermoregulation, sorry, osmoregulation in amphibians, especially living in the dry areas. So right option over here will be beta. Skin of amphibian is the uh, source of rehydration sometime and it's also uh, the cause of water loss. As you can see over here, it's a thin skin it may cause loss of water, but sometimes when they are in the water, they may get water directly from their skin as well. So right option is Delta. Which of the falling water can be reabsorbed in amphibians? Water from nephrons, lymph, or even urinary bladder can be reabsorbed in the amphibians to conserve, to maintain a normal level of water. So right option is Delta over here. What percentage of water is stored according to their body weight in amphibians when they're living on the land? Almost 35% of body weight of amphibian is water, which is in the stored form. Which of the following group is having internal fertilization only? 
anirons they are having external fertilization cogita as well as here is a twist in this question gymnophania they are having internal fertilization but dipteran flies they are also having internal fertilization so as far as amphibians are concerned if there is uh, the option of amphibians will prefer charlie otherwise charlie and delta both are right as both of them they are having internal fertilization so in case of amphibians if the amphibian is written in the statement will prefer charlie otherwise charlie and delta both of them they are having internal fertilization diptera include some biting flies of arthropoda they are also having internal fertilization only so charlie and delta both are right over here salamanders so rely primarily on olfactory and visual cues in courtship and mating whereas dash and dash are important for any neurons tactile cues and male vocalization they are important for courtship and mating in case of salamander so right option is delta specific positioning of the male grasping a female frog for mating is termed as amplexus and it ensures fertilization of maximum eggs released by the female so that's why right option will be beta distress calls and anurons are produced by males as well as females when they are captured by a predator maternal care occur in species with internal fertilization and paternal care may occur in species with external fertilization for example in case of anurons there is some sort of parental care including including maternal as well as inter, uh, paternal and paternal care uh, is usually seen in the species having external fertilization while those having internal fertilization the maternal care is more common which of the following species showed tadpole brooding in stomach it was rio batrachus which is now considered as extinct species and uh, it is used uh, to brood the larvae form the tadpole and the stomach and produces stop producing gastric juice while they are in the stomach to prevent their digestion some salamanders are pedomorphic that is they get maturity sexual maturity even when they are at larval stages because cells fail to respond to the hormones these are thyroid hormones uh, and pedomorphism is very common in salamander species which of the following explains the reason for extinction of amphibians all of these they are the causes for the extinction of amphibians including acid deposition ultraviolet radiation and mining as well as drilling activities there are certain other factors as well any ph below dash will kill all amphibian embryos the ph acidic ph below 5 can kill amphibian embryos so it is a lethal ph range the below 5 embryos will not survive that was all about amphibians questions i hope so it will be helpful as well in the next topic we will discuss inshallah about reptiles and their groups thank you so much thank you for listening allah hafiz